Hello everybody and welcome to DC Fine Art for the part 7, the final step in completing this whole entire piece and I am working right now on the teacup. Now as you can see I have my rough kind of layout on there. You can see some of the leaves kind of drawn in or flowers. It's not exactly to the reference photo. Let's just say that. They're just kind of like giving me ideas of where maybe the leaves would be or where the flowers would be. And I erase that and I go in with my color pencils and I just go ahead and uh, draw them in, like draw what I want in on the teacup itself. So I didn't really go exactly to the reference photo because I left some flowers out or I kind of changed some things around, maybe put a little bit of a, a little bit more of the leaf petals kind of cascading around the t cup or I left some things out. So I kind of did my own thing. Now here I'm using so many different colors. I know I'm using a lot of the fuchsia colors, some reds, yellows, um, the green leaves and I went and used some different colors depending on which leaves I did. So on those leaves there, I, I won't be able to go through every single color or anything like that. Just, I just kind of picked out some greens that matched closer to the reference photo. And then I used a lime green to kind of go around those little leaves because it had like a yellowish hue or a lime green mist kind of air brushed in the background. And so I just used like a lime green um, tone to go around that to kind of create that. And then I went over the top of it with my Derwent drawing Chinese white pencil, which I absolutely love. That kind of mutes it out. And since it is on a teacup and it has more of that porcelain kind of look, using the white Ch Derwent Chinese white over the top of it really helps it out to make it smooth it out, blend it out, not make it pop out too, too much because you know it's on porcelain, so it is glass. But I'm using a lot of greens and then the fuchsia colors or the darker like reddish colors to add to it. Now here I got this other green which is totally different than the other greens that I used. This one here is more like a misty kind of green or a moss kind of green. It's, it's very pastel-y looking. And I used that because some of these leaves that were on the reference photo looked like they were kind of faded out. And I used those, then I used a little bit of a darker green to go in and put like little highlights or shadows on those leaves. And then I went over it with the, with the white pencil just to kind of mute them out a little bit, like kind of push them back into the cup. And the lime green too, like a really light lime green for that yellow airbrush look. Here I'm creating the flower. As you can see, it's nothing compared to my reference photo, or at least my, not my reference photo, but like to the, um, the draft that I put on there. So it does not match up and that's, that's perfectly fine. I just wanted to put that in there when I was drawing it just to kind of show, okay, here's where a flower is, but it wasn't like petal to petal, everything identical. I just went ahead and drew it in with my color pencils. And on this, I did not use any OMS on this neither. I tried to stick with just using the color pencils and burnishing them in toward the end. So that way I didn't really have to go over it with any OMS to blend it out because I just didn't want to have to add that many layers onto it or maybe smudge it out or anything with the OMS. So I wanted to stick with just my pencils on it. Now here I am putting in some reds. Now here I used um, the nightshade and it's more of a really, really dark purple out of the Caran Luminance set. Or not the Caran Luminance, the nightshades out of the Derwent Light Fest set. I went back and forth with the Caran and the Derwent on these. But I tried to stick most off with the uh, the uh, Caran if I could because I can get a little bit of a sharper point with it. So I added in my reds, added in my darker colors for the shadows, and then I went on top of the roses with some white, like a white pencil or my Derwent white to kind of um, 
lighten them up where the sun would be shining on it, which gave it a pinker glow, like a pinkish glow. I put in these different greens and then I add the white on top of it to kind of mute it out a little bit. That's all I'm doing with the white. Now here I'm starting on another flower. This one here is going to be more of a yellowish type of flower, like more of a, a kind of like a brighter yellow, but it had some oranges in there and some reds. So I just kind of threw those in for my shadows by using more of the red tones and the uh, orange tones and then added some of the white to try and keep some of that highlight part out. Now here I kind of, whenever I was using it and used, trying to use the white, trying to brighten it up a little bit, it didn't really want to brighten up a whole bunch because of how bright the yellow was when I started out. So I had to go back in and I ended up mixing up some of my um, titanium white by brush and pencil, which I will show you guys. And that way you can see this. Here we go. It's the Color Pencil Titanium White by Brush and Pencil, and it's a powder mixture. It's just, and it's meant for color pencils also. So what I do with this is I go ahead and open it. I'll take like a little porcelain dish. I get this cute little porcelain dish, but you can see the powder in it. See, it's got the little holes. And then I take my little dish. Of course, you know, there ain't nothing in it. It's just like a crackled, pretty little porcelain dish that I got that I use. I sprinkle some of this powder in there. And I had to put this down so that way I don't try and spill it. Okay. And then I know I don't have a label on this, but I use it's also by brush and pencil, and I shook this up. You gotta shake it really good. It's kind of like nail in a nail po polish bottle, is what it looks like. But it's the uh, Touch Up Texture, and it's by Brush and Pencil also. So it's Touch Up Texture. And I take the brush out, and I'm just kind of cleaning it off, so that way I'm not going to get it everywhere. And I'll take that, and I'll pour some of that into my dish with my titanium white. And I probably put just a little bit too much of the titanium, or the Touch Up Texture liquid in there. It does dry super quick, so you guys want to know that. It does dry really, really quick. So if it starts drying out, you definitely don't want to add no water to it. Do not add water. Um, just mix yourself a little bit more of the touch-up texture and the titanium white. And it's a little bit chunky. I mean, you just really got to blend it in. I probably didn't blend it in as much as what I should because I was kind of a little bit of hurry, but... I went ahead and blended this in. I got a consistency of like a paint-like consistency. And I have a little fine round detail brush is all I'm using. And I'm just kind of mixing it up. Now because I did not, I poured a whole bunch of the titanium white or the titanium, um, not titanium, but the touch-up texture in there, it did make it really... I mean, it was a good consistency, but I didn't blend up enough of the white titanium little crumbs in there. I should have blended it a little bit more. That way it makes it a little bit more opaque than whenever I had it. It still is white, but it still showed up on my paper as being white, just not super, super bright, like in your face white. It kind of dry, when it dries out, it kind of dulls out a little bit, so... And I'm going to have to clean that brush off because I got it, like, all over. So I'll end up cleaning out that brush, and, or, and then I'll go ahead and dip just a little tip of it in there. And let's see if I can't zoom in real quick. All right, so here I'm just putting some of that white of the titanium in there. And I'm just going to put them in areas that I wanted to highlight in there. If you want to, you could just let that dry. And then you can go on top of it with like a lighter color. And it will also stick to it. So you could do that also. And here I'm just kind of putting in some extra bright like highlights within the candle. 
maybe putting like some little dots to where it shows like the candle tip it has a little bit more of a reflection or the white stands out a little bit more if you wanted to make it just a little bit brighter so i'm going over the candle and just kind of highlighting some areas on the candle that maybe might stand out as a little bit whiter or a little bit like a has a reflection on there of the light and then kind of moving you guys around <laughs> trying to <laughs> situate you but um yeah so i ended up going over some of the rows kind of went back over it again in some areas just kind of highlighting some of the areas on the rows now, i don't have to keep all those highlighted areas if i want to i can go over it with like a pink or you know maybe a lighter color or whatever i want on that i can but that's after it completely dries or you could just leave the white just the way it is if you want it that bright to stand out even though it does dry a little bit uh duller of a white than when you first put it on at least it did for me now here i'm kind of uh putting in some of my white highlight on top of the little cupcake paper some of those little bee points just did not stand out as much as I would like them to with the white. So I'm just going in here and just kind of putting little tips, like little dots around on the cupcake paper that I wanted to stand out. Or maybe even an area that I wanted the paper to go around, but I couldn't get that brighter white to kind of stand out. So going in there with this touch-up texture titanium white you know mixture stuff that i'm doing it really does help out and plus that it's archival it's meant to go with color pencil so so that definitely makes it um nice to use when using for a piece that maybe you're going to sell or whatever whatever you feel like doing with it either you're selling it or keeping it now I am going over to my flowers and there were some areas that I wanted to go ahead and add some more highlight to. Now I went through here and just highlighted some of these flowers and little areas that maybe the light would be reflecting off of the leaves or the petals of the flowers. And some of them it did kind of dull down. So I didn't just, it's not really bright white in your face white, but some of it did dull down a little bit whenever it was drying. But adding this little pop for the reflection, it just really made it nice. Some of the light hidden these little petals of flowers. So it's kind of funny. I darkened these. At first I started out with these flowers, you know, being like a lighter yellow. And then after completing it, I went back in and darkened my flowers added more deeper darker tones into the flowers and adding some reds to it to match the chest which um, I absolutely loved it was a beautiful color I did it because my daughter absolutely loves red and black so I decided to go with red for it for her and it really was a good choice it really did pop and so I added that into the flowers that way it all kinds of go like goes together here i'm just kind of working on these flowers adding in some more darker tones i do believe that was a sepia that i used out of my karen dosh i love using that sepia if i can use it for something i will definitely try throwing that one in so now we're going to go ahead and start on around the cup there i'm actually i'm going to do a couple more of these little flower petals or these leaves and stuff erased a little bit of the edge of the cup or little teacup added in a little bit of fuchsia too to the leaves so like some of the leaves had more of a reddish tone to the little little leaf petals and so i went ahead and added a fuchsia for that and there are some reds I know my big hand's in the way. Putting the reds in there, kind of showing that maybe it's going to start another flower going around the cup. I used so many different colors on these. 
I mean, this whole entire thing as far as the teacup and the little tea dish that it's in. And I could not tell you how many color pencils I had. I had a ton. So there was no way to keep track of every single one of them. But as long as you get colors that are close that, to the reference photo, then you should be fine. It doesn't have to be perfect to the reference photo. So here I am adding another little, little flower bud. Adding some different lighter greens in the center. Adding the white over the top. Kind of mellowing it out a little bit. Doing a little bit of a yellow tone and a fuchsia around the edge. Adding some darker tones for shadows in some of the areas. And then I'll branch out the little stem. There's another little bud right there. Adding fuchsia to it. I'm just going around with some darker greens and lighter greens for the center. There's some more leaves. These leaves here are going to be a little bit darker with a more of a fuchsia center to it. And then I'm going over the top of it with, with white to kind of mellow it out. And here's some of these background leaves that are just kind of mellowed out. Which is more of that misty kind of green that I used. Now I'm going to add a flower, kind of like if it's going around the cup. So whenever I'm doing my petals and looking at my petals, I mean, I'm putting them what I see as far as like what I'm looking at my reference photo and just kind of drawing them in the way I see. Even though it does not make sense whenever I'm looking at it and I'm like, that's really a flower. I don't really look at it that way. I'm just like trying to look at shapes and drawing them in. Adding some oranges for shadowing and then the yellows. That way it looks like the flowers are cascading around it. And then I'm using that lime green. It's more of a yellowish green. I shouldn't say lime green. It's more of a yellowish green around the edges of it. And then I use white over the top. So here I'm erasing my dish. Now, in order to do the white, I've been using a lot of grays, toning it out with some white if I need to. But I'll use different types of grays, like silver grays, like these lighter cold grays um, and use those for my shadow and contour of the cup because it's a white cup. So the shadows are going to be more of a grayish tone is all I'm doing. But I tried to stick with leaving some of the paper showing through on the coffee cup. So, or not coffee cup. I always say coffee cup. It's a teacup. I've been using a lot of the paper like to get that bright, bright white. I try and leave the paper showing on the brightest parts of the white. I'm just using different shades of gray for the shadowing. Now here's the gold rim. And I'm using a really dark uh, brown. It could be the, either be a dark flesh brown you could use. Or you could even use like your Castle Earth, like a dark brown. I'm using a little bit of cream in there for um, some of the highlights of the gold. I'm using brown are not really a brown ochre. I'm using more of like a yellow ochre. Um, some orangey yellow tones. So I look for um, more of an orangey yellowish tone to add in some of the highlights there too. So those are the types that I use in order to make it look gold. I'm not using just one gold um, pencil. I'm actually using multiple pencils just looking at the colors, dark browns, um, yellow oranges, um, yellow ochres, those type of colors, maybe cream for like a highlight. Now I'm in adding in some more of the shadowing to the cup around the edges. Now here I'm going to go ahead and erase the edge of the teacup because we're going to start putting the gold around the top of the teacup. And I'm going to use all the same types of colors except for this darker gray that I'm using. And this darker gray I'm just kind of dotting it in. 
making an uneven line because when you're zoomed up on the teacup it kind of had an uneven gray little specks right below the gold color and then now I'm going around it with a really dark brown like a castle earth or a dark flesh could be either one I think that that one might be my castle earth I'm using some of that yellow ochre or the brown ochre in there a little bit of gray And there I go with some of my orangey yellows, brown ochres, I'm using my dark brown for the shadows in the, within the gold. And that gray was just to highlight some of the areas where it was coming down around the cup. Now I went back in at the end, I needed it to be darker around the rim where the shadow was so I went ahead and added black in there for the darkest point so there's more of my castle earth or my dark brown then I put in a little bit of a yellow like a yellow in there and then a cream for the highlight I used white all the way around just to kind of tone it down a little bit and then I added the gold underneath of the little hamster there but I wanted to kind of darken it a little bit because it's kind of underneath of him. So I didn't want it to be super bright. All right, so here comes the handle of the teacup. And it had like a little bit of a dark, like a gold little tip on the edge of the teacup. So I had to add more gold to it. So the first thing I did was add of course the grays my, my gray tones for shadowing around the teacup handle I'm using the white to kind of uh, finish off those edges so I'm just working with different uh, whites to kind of tone it down and smooth it out and kind of blend it in now here I'm going to add a little bit of a gold color so I'm using yellows creams I'll be using some of my my dark browns little tips of it is oranges in there and then my dark brown for the dark shadow that's in the gold and then black on top if I need it even darker yellow ochres and then I use the white a little bit in there And I'll end up blending out those little circles because I knew it looked a little bit weird, but I went it back in and just kind of blended it out with my white pencil. But that's all it is, is just a lot of grays for the shadowings, either from a light gray to a darker gray. using some of the brown there just around the edge of the wood so I'm actually using that just to kind of uh, smooth out the little teacup handle now moving on to the little dish underneath and basically it's going to be the same kind of concept as I did for the little teacup I'm going to actually draw in um, my little flowers and stuff like that in there And I'm just kind of following the reference photo, seeing how these flowers are and how they're shaped. It's not identical. There are some missing flowers or there may be some missing leaves or maybe the leaves are not in the right place, but that's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. I just want to get the right colors and kind of get the idea of how it is on the reference photo, but not perfect. toning those down with white and those are just different greens is all I'm doing I'm just adding a lot of different greens in there making the center light using my kind of getting that airbrush look of the yellow kind of background and I'm just using that yellowish green going over it with white to kind of blend it out as like a porcelain look and then here I'm adding in a yellow flower I'm using reds and oranges for the shadowing. I'm 
of just doing a lot of the reds and the oranges on it. Some white for the highlight. Or at least to tone it down. And then I'm going to add in a red flower in there too. So I'm using a lot of like burgundy reds and some um, a little bit brighter of a red. But then I'm using my white pencil to kind of highlight it out. So it gives that little pinkish glow. Adding some more like petals in there of the red. And I'm not trying to get too close to that edge of the little dish because then I got to remember you got to add in my little um, gold trim all the way around it. So I'm trying to leave some space there. <laughs> I'm coming back through with some of my, my uh, grays tones just to kind of give it a shadow. Smoothing it out with some white. And I will eventually, toward the end, I will have to go back in there and I'll darken it up a little bit more. Now I'm adding some darker grays around the edge here where the teacup kind of sits in this little, little area in the center of the dish. And I'm erasing some of those lines that I had there, just kind of showing that that's where the area of print it was at like the flowers and the leaves but it wasn't identical to what I'm doing I'm drawing it all in by hand adding the white to kind of mellow that out kind of pushing it back into the little dish adding in some darker leaves here now and in the center I use a little bit of a burgundy and then I mellow it out with a little bit of white doing a little bit of the that lime yellow or at least a greenish yellow for the airbrush look and then I'm going to add in a red flower here well actually it's more of a pinkish reddish flower I guess you can call it it's still red and I kind of shape shift this one a little bit because I didn't really I was drawing it in and it just did not look right it kind of looked like these finger petals. I, I don't know what to call them. They're like these finger petals kind of hanging out of there and it just looked very awkward and I tried to put other petals in there and it still didn't look right with that center. So I ended up going back over it with my white pencil and my other types of reds just to kind of reshape that just a little bit. And you'll see how I do that because right now it looks like three fingers kind of sticking out. Actually, I could probably zoom that in real quick. Hold on. Okay, so I got that zoomed in a little bit. And basically how I changed, <laughs> changed that flower up a little bit was by adding some dark like burgundy in the center. So I gave it a center. I needed to give it a center. And then I kind of highlighted some areas and kind of turned some petals around just by adding some highlights and darkening it up. And there I did. I added some more darker colors and kind of shaped those petals a little bit differently. Now in the reference photo, it was like a blurry photo. Like all this was blurred out. And I mean, if you're looking at it at an angle where it's kind of wrapping around, it's really not going to be very proportional anyway because the contour of the glass. So I didn't really put... I mean too much I mean I would say, say I'm putting detail in there but it didn't have to be exactly perfect to the reference photo because when you're looking at this and you're standing back looking at this the first thing it's going to catch your eye is you're going to be looking at the teacup and you're going to be looking at those roses and flowers and these just kind of are contoured and kind of you know disproportioned and here's a step back just kind of looking at it quickly I guess <laughs> that was a quick look but anyways, let's, and then here I'm going ahead and uh, stepping up and doing the gold rim across the little dish now. I'm using all the same colors as I did for 
Um, the rest of the gold, I'm using my yellow golds. Um, I want not really yellow gold, but it's like a yellowish oranges, orangey color. I'm using my yellow ochres. I'm using my dark browns for the deep dark shadows within the gold. I'm using a cream for maybe some of the highlights that are in there. And I'm just basing it off of my reference photo, just kind of looking how it is. There's some of the darker browns just kind of putting in the shadow or that dark brown around the edge of the dish. Using my creams for the highlights. I'm just kind of creating that little gold rim around the edge. And see those flowers, it's like you don't really have to focus too much on those flowers too because the ones around the dish, I mean, your, I mean, your eye gets drawn to the flowers that you put a lot of detail in that teacup. And once you do that, then the rest of it, it's like your, your imagination kind of flows with it. So adding in some of my darker grays too around the dish underneath so it gives that shadow putting white over the top of it, kind of blending those colors together and smoothing them out. And I'm doing the same thing to the edge of this other side. And I'll probably reshape it just a little bit too. Just by adding in some black underneath, I can kind of reshape the edges just a little bit. Still adding some more of the darker shadows to the gold with the brown, with my dark Castle Earth brown. Now I'm using a little bit more of that gray so to give a little bit more of a shadow within the dish. Darkening it up and then I'm smoothing it out with white. Kind of dark enough underneath the edge. Now here is the one time that I did use OMS just to kind of blend it out and make it a little bit smoother. Now I am so sorry for this, this part here, I was kicking myself in the butt for it, but I was not recording when I was doing this little eyeball, so I wanted to show you what I was using. I was using that um, nightshade on the black for the Derwent. I went underneath his eye using that uh, color. I went in with a black Caran d'Ache Luminance over the top to kind of give that shadow and that darkest, darkest portion of his eye. And then I'm kind of showing you here too. I went back over it with a more of a silver tone gray, like a really light gray. And that's how I added some of his highlights in there all around his eyes. So that way it's kind of glowing with the highlight. Adding some more to black in there. So I just kind of did it again for you guys. It was really i wish i had the button pushed and i looked up there and i'd already completed his eyeball <laughs> and i'm like no but yeah those were the colors i used and then i'm going with, with my sepia color here and underneath of his eye but i'm leaving just a little bitty piece open between his eye and that sepia so i can go in with my um, more of my cream color to add a little bit of a highlight to it and here I'm going to be working with his fur. His fur is going to be more layered. So I definitely layered it. I used some darker browns in this. Used my sepia for his little ear. And then I'll use some reds and some pink colors for the center of his ear. So a little bit of pink. Used a little bit of cream around the outside. I'm just kind of mixing colors up a little bit. I'm 
Now I just kind of worked in layers. I used some sepias, some of my dark browns, and then some creams over the top. I think he even switched over to like a yellow. I wasn't, I wasn't really a yellow ochre, but it maybe even a brown ochre. I didn't really want to use like a yellow, an actual yellow in him. And I'm just adding a whole bunch of layers to him. Actually, I did kind of throw in more of a, like a little bit of a yellow ochre. I forgot that I actually did that. I did that because of the candlelight that was lit it had a little bit of a yellowish tone to it so i wanted to add just a little bit of the yellow ochre in him but very minute it's very very minute on that i didn't want to put too much in there because then it wouldn't look he wouldn't look too real <laughs> but i'm just basically working with my browns my brown ochres And I'm just adding layer upon layer. But yet each little stroke that I'm going with, I'm trying to go in the same direction as this fur would be going in the reference photo. Here, let's get some of these pencil marks off. Because I don't need those. I was just showing just a little bit of the direction of the fur or a change of color or maybe a ripple of fur is all I did for that. And there's where some of my lines were of where the ripple of fur was. So I'm just going back in there and putting some of my darker colors in there, like my darker browns. For the little creases or like where the hair would go one way or another way. Oh, and on the other side, I just wanted to go ahead and let you guys know that... I will be coming home for just a few days and I will be able to pick up my powerful pack um, powerful pack for this month of December 2022 so I'm super super excited about that I didn't think that I was actually going to be coming home but I am coming home and I will be picking up that powerful pack and hopefully I can get a um, review over the products that they gave me in that in this month's um, powerful pack and I will try my hardest to go ahead and get the final review of me making like whatever I can just using whatever they gave me out of the powerful pack box. So hopefully I can get both those videos out for you guys. Um, and yeah, I'm super excited about that. I, I was actually dreading not being able to be there to get it, but I will end up getting that box. So super excited about that. That's good news. Good news. We, I mean, I definitely need lots of good news, but yeah, that's definitely one of them. Super excited about it. So I just want to put it out there. And also, if you're new to my channel, um, every Thursday, at least I try every Thursday um, to get a video out to you guys. It's, I just work in different mediums. So sometimes I might do a color pencil, watercolor, or just, you know, charcoal. It could be just about anything. I like to pick it up and just kind of change it up. Uh, when I can. This definitely has been a longer video than normal. It's just I had enough time to uh, go ahead and get this one finished. I mean, no color pencil does take a really long time. So I can't wait for our next video to come out. If there's any kind of changes that will be happening, like if I'm going to be late on Thursday and not get, a, not get any video out on a Thursday or something happens, I did post below the link to my Facebook um, artist group so you can also post your pictures or works in progress on that um, link too if you join that group so it is a small group it's just starting out it's just building it's just growing but definitely um, check that out click it on there and I'll let you guys know too if I'm gonna be late or not have a video out that would be the place to go. Um, would love to have you guys on that if you're interested and wanting to show your artwork or if you're needing any kind of tips or advice, you know, I can help you there too. So it's very nice to have that. Also, I want to let you guys know in the description below, I do have um, 
my prints, like I make prints of some of my artwork. I go through Fine Art America for any of the prints. And on Fine Art America, they also have like cups, mugs, t-shirts. They have curtains, shower curtains, you know, any kind of little thing. I mean, they got quite a few things on there. So if you're interested in picking up maybe a print or something, maybe even a notebook or anything like that, um, yeah, click on the link below. It's Fine Art America, and it should take you over to all my prints and what I have available on there. Um, and then also I have my webpage uh, also listed in the description below where you can um, see some of the original um, artwork that I have for sale. So that is on there also. So lots of good stuff. Got it. I know I don't usually talk about it much. Um, I know this holiday has been a definitely a tough one for me and my family. And uh, yeah, I just need to, I wanted to go ahead and let you guys know and start being more productive as far as pushing forward and letting you guys know what all I have out there. Um, but that's just, you know, just something I'm sharing with you guys. There's no pressure or anything like that to do anything. That's not, that's not what it is. It's just, I need to at least let you guys know what I have in the description below. And then also, um, I think that's just about it on that. If you're new to the channel, please click the like and subscribe. Um, that definitely helps my channel out, helps the channel grow. And it also, um, cause YouTube does an algorithm thing where if you hit the like or if you make a comment or anything like that, it definitely puts you out there so that way other people can see the videos too and it helps to grow the video itself. So definitely hit the like or subscribe. Helps out my channel. Amazing. And would love to have the new people that just maybe see this. Um, yeah, definitely join, join in. I'd love to have you guys on this channel. Love to hear your feedback and... Um, yeah, so I think that's pretty much, um, I really wanted to hit those parts, you know, as much as I can, um, but yeah, like, like, and subscribe definitely helps, but here I'm working on the fur, back to the, back to the picture, I know we missed some of the fur, um, on this fur, since he was stretched out, and he was looking at this little muffin here, or this little, you know, cupcake muffin thing that he likes, I was always checking on my reference photo and kind of looking at the fur and it was definitely shaped in different ways because of them being stretched out and the spur, fur kind of spreading apart. So I would use like my dark brown and then I would use like more of a cream kind of for the tops or the edges so that way it shows the fur kind of sticking up. But down toward the root is more of a darker color. So I had to do this where his fur kind of spread apart where he arched his back and I wanted to use the dark brown and then, of course, the cream on top, just showing that it's got kind of like a highlight or a reflection off the light, which I'll go back in and add a little bit more of a lighter color to it uh, where the light would be hitting it. So definitely on this, you want to get your values right, you know, making sure you have your darks and your lights in there. And I will end up going back over him once I'm done and kind of putting in some more darker colors just to show the shadowing or have a little bit darker colors. I know my lighting that I have is like super, super bright. So it definitely lights up everything, kind of makes it look a little bit, um, kind of stands it out a little bit as being lighter. But uh, with your natural, like whenever you're looking at it in natural light, he definitely is, um, he definitely got some, his darks and lights in there. But that's also another thing you can do is stand back and look at your drawing too or look at what you're doing. Sometimes it helps if you just kind of stand back and look at it. Um, others, e even looking through this camera, like on my camera, if I look through the camera, sometimes I can see things on the camera that doesn't look right compared to what I see with my own eye. And I can go back in and adjust that. So... And here I'm trying to go in the direction of whether, where the fur is going. Putting in some of those darker areas on his back.
Yeah, I absolutely love little uh, hamsters. Like, I know I have a hamster at home and absolutely love her. She is so super sweet. And it's just, I've been kind of attached to little hamsters. I just think they're adorable. Kind of lightening out some of the fur in there, which I should add, be adding in a little bit more darker uh, colors to it, but I'll go back in and add some more dark or at least more of my browns and my brown ochres. And I'm just going in the direction of the fur is all I'm doing. Definitely wanted to make his back a little bit darker since it is facing away from the light and in a teacup. Putting in some of those cream colors. Because I don't want them to be too dark. And see, I can always go and put in my darker colors and go light. Um, sometimes I go light so that way I don't go too dark. So that's why um, I do that. You kind of do, I kind of do both. So if you're wondering if you go dark to light or light to dark, you can actually do, I like to do both. Some areas I want to start out with dark, then layer on top with some light highlights. Other areas I'm wanting to keep it to where it's not too dark. So I go over it with something light first, then start throwing in some of my darks in there. That way I don't go too, too dark too quick. So I'm just kind of creating some of that different color fur, the darks and the lights. I'm not trying to make them too, too dark. Or some of his shadows. Adding those in because it was really dark in that area. I'm darkening up this little area a little bit more and underneath where the fur kind of sticks up. So I'm just throwing some more darks back into it, adding some more lights on top. So it's all just a layering process of going back and forth and adjusting the color as needed. And I'm trying to go in the same direction as the fur is going as in the reference photo. Of course, the reference photo didn't really have like a hamster in a teacup, but I mean, I'm just looking at the colors of the hamster himself. <laughs> And all the reference photos that I did use, I actually got them off of Pixabay. Um, and they were just several different reference photos, all different ones. And I just kind of took bits and pieces out of each reference photo to create this piece. And I also adjusted things too. So <laughs> definitely doesn't look like any of the reference photos. I mean, there's some of it you can tell that it maybe came from there, but it ain't identical. Oh, there's some little bit of my white kind of broke a little bit on that. And I'm just kind of going over some of the areas, kind of adding a little bit of that fur highlight to it. And then I noticed I was like, okay, it needs to get a little darker in this area, right where the light is not shining. So I darkened it up, adding a little bit more of the lighter fur in there. But then I'm going to go back into this and make it even darker because I did step back and look at it and I was like, no, it needs to be darker because it's facing away from the light. Adding in some darker tones to his ears. Adjusting some of those little fur strands with some of my dark browns and then adding those in the highlights. 
darkening this up right around the edge a little bit more with a dark black but just very little now I'm making shadows on his little hands shadowing off the top and since it's working with such a teeny tiny little paw I mean it was really hard to try and um, get the fine detail as I would with like something a little bit bigger like the teacup and stuff so I definitely had to do some adjusting over and over again with this little paw just so that way it doesn't look you know like it doesn't fit in so it's just something that it's just so tiny so it's hard to work as much detail into the little paws adding some more shadows and some color to his paw otherwise it would end up looking too white I'll have to add in a little bit of highlight maybe underneath the claw and then I'll add in some shadows And then I'll do the same for this little paw here that's you can barely barely see it underneath this fur so in all reality even though I'm adding in the little claw or doing something on the other side it is so hard to see because of the fact that it's kind of hidden and kind of blending into his little fur so it's one of those things that you probably can't see very well but I know it's there so I went ahead and put it in even though it's really hard to tell the difference between it and um, all the fur Here's where I took a step back and I knew that it needed to darken up. So basically what I did is I took my nightshade out of the Derwent Light Fast set and I ended up going in through it. Now here's where you can tell there's the nightshade and I went ahead and added that. Of course it is like a purplish kind of color but adding some of those purple colors or blue colors or whatever you know to your painting it really does help to bring more depth and I went ahead and used that in there to kind of darken it up back behind him where the light ain't shining maybe I can zoom that in just a bit hold on all right so you can kind of see from this angle that the um, nightshade I'm adding in some more darker tones in there with the nightshade that way it's got a shadowing back behind him and there is a picture of my finished piece and for the grand finale here since I am finally finished here's the most exciting part of all and I and if you created artwork and you've done this before removing the tape is the most satisfying part of all you just have to go easy I know I have a little bit sped up so I'm actually going a little slower than what I shows right here but I'm going to go ahead and remove the tape and I will show you guys what the finished piece looks like. And to all you guys, I want to say happy holidays. I will have a video out next week, hopefully, hopefully, um, hopefully maybe the powerful pack box and y'all have a good time and I'll see you next week. And yeah. All right. <laughs> Bye you guys. See wells fall